overall, I gotta say, I am disappointed. Um, starts off with some dude named Corey. I've already seen the, uh, the first two movies. Well, I've seen all of them. But uh, I give you context that I have seen the 2018 one, the 2021, and now the 2022 one. So I know, and the one from like 1978. Um, maybe it was further back, I don't know. But I've seen them, so I know everything within its context. So in the beginning, we're introduced to, to some new character named Corey, it's a name I can't forget because they say his name like a million times in this movie, um, who basically, he accidentally kills a kid, um, but I mean, I mean, I'm not for for murder, but that that little kid was asking for it, um, or he used to be manslaughter, um, because it was just a weird kid. Like, I don't know what kind of prank that kid be doing, but he like broke a, broke the lamb, and then he puts a knife on the on the stairs, and then locks his babysitter Corey in the room, and then he gets hit by the door, and then he falls off the balcony, and the kid dies. Um, it was a strong intro for the movie because it was shocking. Um, I would say that the biggest overall theme in this movie definitely, um, uh, what's the word? Something expectations subverted my expectations for sure. So they had me like, okay, so words. So this little boy and the babysitter, um, you know, instead of having a female babysitter, they had a male babysitter on Halloween, the boy dies. Now this guy gets blamed for this whole thing. He's stigmatized and everybody hates him in town. He gets out. The movie focuses on this new character, this Corey dude, um, for like 50, maybe 65% of the movie, focusing on a character that I thought eventually, like, yo, they are focusing on this Corey dude so much um, that he's got to be related to Michael Myers because there's a point where he gets um not killed but like uh these teenagers they throw him off a bridge and then michael myers drags him into the sewer the whole the whole damn movie michael myers is in a hole in the sewer system doing nothing just rotting there i guess for the past four years um which we'll talk about because it's weird how like he seemed weak in this movie or disempowered um because he was beast in the first two um so anyway, so he brings Corey into the sewer system and he lets Corey live. He like looks at him in the eyes and they don't really explain anything. We have to just make our own inferences as the audience that he sees something in Corey to the point where he lets him go. And Michael Myers doesn't let anybody go. Um, all the while there's some homeless dude that sees Michael Myers and Michael Myers doesn't kill him. I don't know. But Michael Myers, he's supposed to be the embodiment of evil, pure evil. He has no feelings for no one. And he'll kill he'll kill men, women, children, babies, whatever. He doesn't care. He has no moral compass as to who to kill, not to kill. And so for the first time, as we go by canon, because in, there was a Halloween movie where he had the opportunity to kill a baby, but then he didn't, and that baby ended up growing up. But within the canon of 1978, 2018, 2020, and 2022, he has never showed any remorse for anybody. But somehow, this Corey dude, he lets out. He looks him in the eyes. But they have a cute little heart-to-heart -heart with no words. And I don't know if it was some kind of transference of evil. I don't know if it was Michael Myers saw something in Corey um, that he related to some kind of supernatural element. I don't know, but Corey gets away and then Corey becomes a bad guy. Slowly but surely he becomes the bad guy. At one time, at, at, at a certain point, he wrestles Michael Myers and wins and he takes the mask and he starts killing people as Michael Myers. Okay. Um, I think it was just so much time dedicated to a new character that went nowhere because again, subverting expectations um, this core dude just kills himself in the end. He stabs himself in the neck. He's like, if I can't have your granddaughter or whatever her name is, then you can't either. That, that you being Lori Strode. It focuses on the granddaughter and this Corey dude and their love relationship when it should have been focusing on Lori Strode, the main character. I thought it was going to focus on Michael Myers and Lori Strode. The big showdown at the end, um, but it focused on some 
dude named Corey um, through most of the movie. Um, what else, what else, what else? The supernatural elements were not explained. So here's what super confused me. So in, um, in the last movie, Halloween Kills, he's just in beast mode, killing everyone. He's just, he's beast mode. And then the town comes together, they show like a mob mentality, and they all group together to kill Michael Myers. They like, he's been shot. He's been, I think got like a pitchfork in his back. He's been hit with bats. He is just brutalized by the townspeople at the end of the movie. And, um, and he falls onto the ground. And then he gets up and he kills everybody. Just, he decimates everybody. Like he is, he, he's just killing everybody. Um, so it's really weird to see him in this movie four years later. I think they should have started, um, uh, start the movie the way they started the the second movie as soon as the first one ends i think it should have been that maybe it should have all taken place in one night or maybe you know i don't know november 1st the day after halloween i don't know but then again it is called halloween but four years this dude's been in the sewer systems i guess surviving off of rats we never see him eat we never see him take a pee break we don't see him do anything that's normal but he's been in the sewer for four years Surviving off of God knows what. Um, the homeless dude says that he sometimes does go out and kill a person, brings them back to the sewer and kills them. I don't know, just to get his thrills. I don't know. Um, but for some reason, he just seems weak. Um, and I guess it's supposed to be like the more he kills, the more he gets power. But since he wasn't killing as much. But if that was the case, then in the first movie, because he hadn't killed anybody for like... 30 years um, from the first movie and then he was in jail. So it just, they don't, they don't really explain the lore that he was killing people for power, but he wasn't killing people in the first movie until he got out of jail after 30 years. Excuse me. So I don't know. And then this whole transference of power thing with Corey, um, they just have a little, a moment and they show like scenes of the past or whatever. And Corey being sad, they had some kind of moment, and he looks him in the eyes, and then lets him go. He has him by the neck, and then lets Corey go. And Corey got like a cut on his hand that I guess was healing faster than normal. So is it like it's supposed to be a nod to Michael Myers, like transferring his energy to Corey, because now he's just a super healer. Um, but then he kills himself in the end. So I don't know. Um... And all this is talking, like most of everything I'm saying is about some dude named Corey. Laurie Strode who's the main character, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. She does a great job. Even the core dude, like all the acting is great in this movie. It's just focused on a person that we have no historical background with. He has no lore, he's just a new character. Um, I thought it was gonna be where Corey was, they were gonna retcon it and be like, oh, um, Corey is Michael Myers' long lost baby brother or something. And they were somehow, I don't care if it was his nephew, his brother, his, I don't freaking know. Uh, and that's how they were going to tie it together. Like, why would Michael Myers give, you know, give Corey up, like, to let him go and come freely in and out? Um, they, there's no explanation. Somehow he sees something in this Corey guy, lets him go, and um, and they don't explain. Like, there's no connection. There is no connection between Corey and uh uh, Cause like Corey's supposed to be like 21 years old and Michael Myers uh, existed before Corey even existed, like birth wise. So they had no damn connection. And Corey just, he just gets Corey go. Um, let's Corey go. Uh, Strode, um, she does a great job. The showdown at the end, I think it could have been better. It was a nice intimate setting. Um, they hit you with a little bit of uh, scream because she kills Corey, kinda. He's kind of laughing it off where he was uh, shot and I think he fell, I can't remember. Um, he like fell down the stairs, whatever. Somehow they get to the bottom of the stairs of her house, but she shoots him twice. I thought it was uh, a nice twist, just like in the first movie where we think that the daughter is like super duper scared and then all of a sudden she, she shoots Michael, she's like crying and then she straightens up and has a serious face and then she shoots Michael Myers. So we think that Lois Strode is gonna kill herself but um, but she's like, yo, you know, you thought I was actually gonna kill myself, so she shoots, 
uh, Michael Myers takes off the mask and ends up being Corey. Um, and then she has a final showdown, which is like five minutes of what we've actually been waiting for. The big showdown between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. In the meantime, the granddaughter is over here upset that um, her grandmother's like not approving of her relationship with Corey. It's not too interesting of a story. At one point, you think that maybe they're going to be in it together, killing people. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Forgive me, I'm all over the place. So Michael Myers kills indiscriminately. And I thought, okay, so if this guy is going to become the new Michael Myers and I want to continue the franchise, but he's only killing people that have hurt his feelings. And Michael Myers doesn't care. He just, he don't got no feelings to be hurt. He's just a mute monster. Um, the most we get out of him is breathing. He doesn't say a whole word about any of the franchise. But that's what makes him menacing. You don't know what he's thinking or what he's looking at. Um, but this guy's killing people that hurt his feelings. At one point, he does, Corey does get back at the teenagers that, that hurt his feelings and like beat him up. Um, so that was satisfying to see like, yo, them, them getting their comeuppance because they were jerks. But, you know, and Corey has like a messed up mom, but he has a super nice dad. The super nice dad who is supportive of him, gives him a nice bike, gives him a job. Um, gives him, uh, you know, like, not love advice, but he said, like, yo, you know, follow what you love. You love this girl, do what you love. While the mom is over here hating him, slapping him, whatever. And so when his father dies on accident, gets shot in the head by the teenager, who uh, the father was, um, got in front of the bullet for his son, Corey, and then Corey just disappears. Corey showed no remorse that the one person that was on his side, other than his girlfriend, was just shot and killed. He just never gets mentioned at all. And he seemed like a super duper nice, nice guy. We sat to see him go. Um, the showdown at the end, it shows it shows Michael Myers. He does get beat at the end. He gets held down. It was satisfying to see Michael Myers and not just blown up, but but like, um, I mean, I'm assuming you've already seen the movie. You made it this far. But, you know, he's on the table and he gets a knife in one hand, the knife in the other hand, and then the refrigerator, like he can't move his leg. So he's just all over messed up. Um, and then, uh, so she has a knife and she like, you know, cuts his neck and then makes sure to cut his, his wrist so that all the blood comes out so that he cannot wake up. Uh, and then it was really cool. I thought it was nice to see. She was like holding the hand of Michael Myers while she killed him. Um, it wasn't like an, uh, ah, it was, you know, a slice to the wrist and she was holding his hand as he left and she already took off the mask. Um, and looking at him, looking at his face, I guess looking in his eyes. So I thought it was interesting, like, that was her putting her demons to rest, her putting her fear to rest, like, she's saying goodbye to the person that's kept her up at night for the past 30 years, um, to the one thing that has given her life, uh, purpose to see this person dead. Um, and then at the very end, um, they parade him on top of a car, and they take him to the junkyard place and he goes inside of a grinder. For a moment, the way the camera editing is, you're thinking like, yo, is Lori about to jump into this grinder because it's, she's the, like the camera's showing her and she's looking down, but then it shows the grinder and you think like, yo, is she about to jump in to like make sure he's dead or something? No, it's just a weird editing. Um, so he goes into the grinder and he dies. Um, Going into the movie, I was thinking, you know, he's probably not going to die. It says Halloween ends, but you know, they got a million of these movies. But then again, Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis isn't getting any younger. And I thought it was going to be like where, oh, he's dead. But then there's going to be like, you know, his, his body and it's going to be like a little twitch. You know how they do in movies where um, the bad guy dies and then they're like, they're like this, you know, their body, whatever on the ground. And then they see like, you know, a fish, like they're actually going to get up or they twitch or something, something to show that they are actually alive. They don't do that, they don't leave a body, they don't burn it, they put it inside of a grinder. Um, I guess like a, a metal grinder for cars and stuff. Um, and that's how that's how they they, they end Michael Myers. Um, and then at the very end, they talk about some Japanese cherry blossoms or some crap, I don't know. It's obvious that she has some kind of romantic tension or relationship with the cop dude from the first, first movie. Um, 
And then the last shot is just the mask on the table in a brightly lit house and everything is clean and put back together. I guess symbolizing that her life is finally put back together. And the granddaughter, she drives off and leaves Haddonfield, um, Ohio or Illinois, I don't forget. Um, so I thought it was a nice send off for the granddaughter. Um, it would have been nice maybe um, to see Laurie Strode be like, yo, um, would you like to come in? And that's when we see them, you know, go in and we can assume you know, uh, you know, that they're going to have some kind of relationship or something. I think what would have been a better ending to give it more finality. I like that. It's a, it's essentially a happy ending because Laurie Strode lives. Um, no one wants to see the good guy die, but I, I think to give it more of a, an impact and even make it bittersweet because it is the end of, of an era. It's the end of Halloween, the series. I don't think they're going to make another one. People are saying, oh, it's probably going to make another one. You know, and give it 10 years, it'll reboot it. It's already been rebooted by Rob Zombie. I think this is it. Maybe another 25 years for the next generation, they'll make another one. But these movies are great. I think how it should have ended was one final hurrah where Michael Myers, right before they turn on the grinder, he gets up and he pulls... Lori Strode's like by the arm or the leg and he drags her down with her so that she dies too. I think it would have been nice to have them both die even though she's the character we're rooting for to really give it that um, in the end, Michael Myers did get his vengeance on her and vice versa. And also just give a finality to just everything like the the, the, the two, you know, the, 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 the the complete opposites, the Laurie Stroll and the Michael Myers, um, they die together um, in some kind of like, it's like a sick poetic way of they both die together at the same time. And in the end, Michael Myers got the last laugh because he got the person that he's been chasing um, for the past 30 years, the person he's been wanting to kill for the last 30 years. And, and and she died by the hands of the person that she'd been trying to kill all these years. So she got to kill him, but well, he killed like her, her daughter and everybody in the last movie. Um, and then she got to kill him, but then at the last second, he grabs her and pulls her down and now they're both dead. So now um, the whole the whole um, town is like, oh, this is crazy. Um, and it should have, I think it, it would have had a more, uh, more of an impact then if they both died. But as it stands, it's nice that it died on a, on, a, on a happy note, but I think it would have been stronger if it was a bittersweet note. Because now the granddaughter has no one. And that gives her even more motivation to leave Haddonfield, to just leave everything behind, to get in her car. She just had enough and she just wants to start a new life and forget about the past. And maybe like the daughter, because she has the, the, the wedding bands of her mother and father that died in the last movie, um, to have... To, to have something of her grandmother's, um, maybe another ring or something. Um, maybe like a shard of the knife that she used to kill Michael Myers at night, put it in the necklace. I don't know, but something where she has her mother, her father, and her grandmother, the three most important people in her life, and she goes off and drives into the sunset or whatever, and we know that she's gonna just find a new life and never look back. At her uh, crazy experiences, um, the I think what just sucked was that um, the the powers of Michael Myers was never ever ever explained, and you don't need someone to like, you know, like to narrate like, oh, he's going through this and going through that, but like it's just never explained. Like another good idea would have been with maybe when he died, if they were gonna go the supernatural route, to like have like. A shadow or something uh, my, uh, my girlfriend was saying like when we saw it together like maybe if we saw something leave his body and then it transfers to someone else his evilness I was saying uh, that's a good idea but I would say make it so that instead of the town healing because he's dead his soul or whatever uh, is like a shadow over the whole town so that even though he is dead and he's never gonna come back but just that idea of fear um, just grips the town and forever it's just part of the lore of that town like this is where Michael Myers uh, just haunts and it's just this this I don't know depression or evil feeling that the whole town the whole town has as a result of killing um, you know killing Michael Myers like uh, like 
Like if you, the idea of like breaking the beehive, but then all the bees are above the town, you know, just for the imagery. So you kill the guy and now the evil is all above the town and still always that the town of Haddonfield, just this constant depressing or fearful place where bad things happen. Um, uh, just super duper bad luck or something. So no actual Michael Myers, it's the end of Michael Myers, but something where it still lingers. Um, it didn't show any of that. So it just didn't make sense where in the last movie he was super duper beat up and then in, and he gets up. And so I'm like, yo, so it's, he's supernatural. They didn't explain any of that in the first movie. They don't explain any of that in the second movie. They don't explain any of that in the third movie. We just have to assume. So he's gonna get shot and stabbed and beat. He gets up, kills people. Okay, so he's not, he's like a superhuman. And then in the next movie, he's just weak and gets wrestled out by some scrawny 20 year old kid or whatever, uh, Corey. Um, and then Corey kills himself. And then at the end, when Corey kills himself, Michael Myers finishes him. And then uh, uh, India was like, was he, it was like a mercy killing. It didn't seem like a mercy killing to me. Um, but then maybe it was, I don't know. I think if it was to show that it was not a mercy killing because she took, because Corey took Michael Myers' mask, I think that he should have like maybe punched him and like made a hole in the, in the ground while he was punching him to show that there was an anger that he took his mask, that he wrestled, that he wrestled him and he beat him. But it's like, yo, like Michael Myers is supposed to be this unstoppable feeling this feeling -less machine. And for the whole movie, he's, he's not really in it. Laura Strode, she's in it, but they focus so much on Corey alone. They focus on Corey with the girlfriend. Um, and so Michael Myers, um, someone had tweeted that it was nice to see that Michael Myers got a cameo in his own movie. You know, just being facetious that he wasn't really in the movie a lot. He was in a hole. Michael Myers was not in the movie a lot, but for me, it was satisfactory. Um, it could have been better. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, like I said in other videos, like I know I always touch on religious things and Ocha and all that. Um, but I, I do have a passion for movies and I'm not just inside freaking, you know, singing Luku Me all damn day and servicing, uh, my Risha, my Muertos and all that all day. Like I enjoy movies. I enjoy going to the movies when I can. I haven't been recently, but I can see this on Peacock. Um... I want to do a re uh, review on the Munsters, that Netflix movie. Um, and so this is also part of what I love to do. So if you stayed this long, thank you. If not, I totally understand. Um, but yeah, check out the other reviews. Halloween ends. That's what I think. If I had to give it a score, I would give it a, a five or six. A five-ish, five-ish, six-ish. Because it was good, but... They just focus on a character, this character, Corey guy that just, are you gonna throw in a brand new character to focus on uh, at the last movie? You know, I understand subverting expectations, but how are you gonna have a Michael Myers movie with Laurie Strode on the, po on the poster? They get the little showdown for five minutes when the first movie did it better. The first movie, I gotta say, is the best. And when I say the first, I mean the 2018 Halloween movie. Um, it was the best. They had a real showdown. It was like cat and mouse and it was great. It was a great movie. This did not live up to the first movie. Um, the reviews are not coming out good. Um, but if someone said to me, I would, this is my, my measure of how good a movie is. If someone, uh, I've already seen the movie. If someone were to come up to me and say, Hey, we're going to go to the movies. We're going to go see Halloween ends. And I say, oh, I've already seen it. Would I be willing to see it again? That's how you know it's a really, really good movie. Uh, I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Maybe if I was in a good mood, yeah. But I'd be like, ah, eh, nah, it's a good. You, y'all can go see the movie. Um, I already seen it. Um, if it was really, really good, like if it was like Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, yeah, I'd be like, hell yeah, we can go ten times and, and go see it. This movie, Halloween Ends, uh, eh, five out of ten, six out of ten. Um. I don't think they're going to make another one. They did not do any teasers. His figure didn't twitch at the end. His just body was obliterated and grinded up. Um, and like a straight folded into each other. Uh, into itself. So 
that's it. So I hope y'all enjoyed the review. If you stood this long, thank you. And let me know if there's any other movie that you think that I should review. And that'd be really, really cool. I think it'd be dope to do reviews as well. Okay? Peace out.